We're going to start off with a short video about actually connecting the sensor and setting up the Bella Vista for capnography. You'll notice in looking at the monitored parameters here for end tidal CO2 that we don't have a sensor in line yet. And before we do anything with capnography, I want to actually show you a couple of things you need to be aware of when you're setting up. So I'm going to go out to the main menu page. I'm going to hit the button in the lower left hand corner. We go to the main menu and we're going to scroll over to the calibration assist. This is where you can actually go to zero your sensor. And as you can see, right now it says zeroing not possible because I haven't yet connected the sensor to the ventilator. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and you'll see that this uh, screen will update and change. It's really important when you're putting this LIMO connector in the ventilator that you line up the keys and encourage your customers to line up the keys correctly before they try to push it in. The connector is plastic and the port is metal and if they have them misaligned and force it in over time they'll wear out the keys on the connector and potentially damage it. So get the connectors lined up um, with the keys in the slots and then snap it in and you'll hear the tone the ventilator recognized that it was attached and you can see that my last calibration was earlier today. If you do need to zero it, you want to have the sensor out of line. You can't do this with it in the patient. We're using the mainstream sensor today. Make sure that it's not anywhere near an exhaled gas source. You don't want any carbon dioxide in it. And the manual will actually tell you to wave it around a little bit in the air. That's assuming that you've just taken it out of the patient's airway and then just hit the calibration button. And there's a confirmation step and it's done and you'll see that once it finishes the calibration, it updates with the current date and time. A zero calibration is actually not technically a zero carbon dioxide level calibration. Room air is around 380 parts per million of carbon dioxide, so it does calibrate with that in it to, um, to make sure that it's accurate. So we've finished that. While we're out here, let's go ahead and hit the back button at the top left hand corner. And you'll see in the configuration assist screen that when we go to the alarming page, we have CO2 alarming is disabled. So although we've connected the sensor to the ventilator, the ventilator will not provide alarms for carbon dioxide unless we go here and enable it. So we're going to go ahead and enable those alarms. Now that they're enabled, we'll jump back out to the cockpit screen. And if we go to the alarm settings page, you'll see that now we have an end tidal CO2 alarm available. And I'm going to go ahead and drop that down so that we don't get any nuisance alarms while it's not in line. So you can see that appeared there. If we go back out to the configuration assist screen and go into the alarms and we disable it here and we jump back over to the alarm settings, you'll see that I can't actually set the alarm here. So if you connect a sensor and you get to the alarm page to set an alarm and you notice that it's grayed out like it is on the display now. That means you need to go back out again, main menu to the configuration assist page and actually enable the alarms here. So that's a really important point. So now we've got the sensor zeroed, it's set up, we've got alarms enabled and we're ready to put it into use. And we've got a separate video for that. So.